Now, too many see the protests as the problem. No, the problem is what forced your fellow citizens to take to the streets, persistent and poisonous inequities and injustice. And please, show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. Be honest, this is not a tranquil time. They're not here to make power or you or me comfortable. They're here to yell, criticize, blame, and shame. You don't have to like it. But why not focus on remembering the reason for the pain that fuels their purpose? That was constitutional scholar Chris, don't call me Fredo Cuomo, um, who I think went to law school, but probably didn't get as first as far as the First Amendment because he missed the word peaceful when it comes to challenging our government. Uh, I'm Sebastian Gorka, former strategist to the President of the United States, with a guest that I'm so excited always to have in studio. It's hard to get him here because he is living the life of a free man in Texas. He is Project 21's Horace Cooper. Follow them at Project 21 News. Horace, welcome back in studio. I want to hear about how life in the Lone Star State is. But first, isn't isn't uh, there something that you used to teach yeah, called I, constitutional law? <laughs> that's right. George Mason University. Not that far from here. So um, Chris Cuomo says you don't have to be peaceful. It doesn't say that anywhere. Chris Cuomo is missing out on a lot here. First of all, First of all, let me just observe this. Step outside my classroom and let's observe this. What I've been witnessing and what I'm hearing sounds like hate. It's hate rhetoric. What you're seeing on the streets. Yes, and it is familiar. All you've got to do is look in your history books and you'll see that throughout segregation, you saw hate rhetoric. Crowds gathered. They made demands, and they sought mob justice. They tried to influence cases, prosecutors. They intimidated elected leaders. And the result of it was a reign of terror on many, many black Americans. Shame. Shame on Chris Cuomo and many other commentators like him so you're for see, saying you'll say you'll say you're seeing that now you're seeing yes, the same thing again for saying it's okay to quote demand justice by intimidating elected officials by intimidating prosecutors we should never let a decision as to who will be charged and who will not be charged be on the basis of riots outside. Okay, this is I don't important. mean looting. Yeah. I mean literally even marching and making so demands. So hang on, hang on, hang on. Let, let, let me be, let, oh, Lord forbid, I'm going to be Fredo here for a second. But hey, uh, Horace, this is just like the Reverend Martin Luther King. This is not like the Reverend Why? Martin Luther Explain King. Explain to our listeners. Martin Luther King eschewed all forms of violence and he promoted principles rather than coming in and making demands about specific cases. In this circumstance, what we are seeing is what led to the 4,000 lynchings that happened in America from Reconstruction all the way to the 1950s. People came out, they quote, demanded justice. justice. And the justice that they demanded ultimately frequently resulted in an injustice people were brought forward even if there weren't cases that could be proven against them in fact in many of these instances in fact that's why we had lynching a jury would never even get impaneled i am watching what's being said and what's being said is that we shouldn't let a prosecutor determine if the evidence fits we're hearing people say, I demand, we want the death so, penalty. So this is massively important. So what you're saying is that what America affords is for anyone of any color, variety, political determination to march, to do civil disobedience, to protest, 
based upon principles. That's correct. But when you say, because this is the chant, no justice, no peace. When you say you are demanding justice, because that is a demand for summary justice. Absolutely. And they will then tell you. It's, then it's unconstitutional. Is that what you're saying? It's unconstitutional. It's ahistorical. It throws out our system of government, our system of justice. By the way, black Americans, minorities, benefit from the idea. Remember, our system is premised on this idea, this concept. Right. That... Even guilty people may walk free so that we don't inadvertently and unduly capture innocent, innocent. people. Wow. They are throwing that out when they say that we don't want the prosecutor in Minneapolis. We, we want Officer Chauvin to be injected. Yes. Right. Well, and here's the question I'm wondering. Why isn't the media saying to people, well, why didn't we just grab the officers, all four of them? Line and, them up and against the wall and just put a pistol to their heads and shoot them or the equivalent of lynching. Of lynching. Why aren't we doing that? Why? Because okay. we are a system Horace, of justice. Horace Cooper, I need to ask you. I've been living here. I, I get it. I'm an immigrant. I've only been here for 11 years. Why am I only hearing this from you? It's very, very distressing when I look at what must be known. What absolutely must be known. And yet, in MSNBC, they have legal commentators. CNN, they have legal commentators. ABC, they have legal commentators. And not a one of them have been talking about the fact that they're prejudicing the jury trial. They're doing all manner of things that are not consistent with our existing legitimate system of criminal justice. So the first thing that I would say to Fredo is, why aren't you holding those commentators like yourselves and others? I don't mean like you, Dr. Gorka. I mean <laughs> right. himself like and Don Lemon right. and others. Why isn't he asking them, wait a second, don't minorities, and by the way, our, our constitutional system is very vested in a, a particular minority. You know what that particular minority is? The individual. Yes. The, the smallest crowd, minority. The smallest minority. The crowd is going around talking about collective judgment, yeah. collective guilt. The very Hang opposite. On. Collective guilt? I know a group that used that. Oh, absolutely. But this Adolf, is what we're Adolf seeing. Hitler used collective guilt for the Jews. And so did the communists in China. And yes. so did the communists. They're doing in it the right Soviet now. Union. The Uyghurs. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Horace, we're not hearing this. Horace. It's very dangerous. This is... I don't know if my guests are listening. This is the most important interview we've done since George Floyd died. Thank you, Horace Cooper. You are shining a light on the real problem. What they are doing on the streets of America can, by definition never lead to justice. Wow. Don't go anywhere. And you, my friends, don't touch that dial. I'm Sebastian Gorka. This is America First. But oh, what come we'll on. Do is we're going to take this and we'll shoot it out. And um, maybe I'll make up. a. Uh, you must. I'll, I'll, I may make a, a blog post so, based on it. It's like you just suddenly see it. It is a form of lynching. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. So we're not going to do my book today, but oh, I would like oh, to. Pitch. I, have to, I have to. First, I have to. Um, well, I want to pitch, it, but I don't want to get turned it, off. To just discuss the book. No, 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 no problem. Uh, okay. But first, I have to introduce you properly because I forgot your other title. All right. Chairman of Project 21. Yep, Chairman, yep. And Senior Fellow with the National Sen Center for Public Policy Sen Research. National Center Public Policy Research. And the book is? How Trump is Making Black America Great Again. Oh, and just a, 10 seconds on that because oh, I yeah, think yeah. what we want to talk about is, is big. And when is that out? And it is out in less than 30 days. Oh, my gosh. Before the 4th of July. When can they order? And it's already available for order. All right. We're going yes. to tweet that out. We, uh, you wanted to do the cruise? Ah, uh, yeah. I'll, uh, maybe like a day or eight. Yeah, I'll work it out.
you want a mask and do those, so. I'll work it out. I'll do the. I'll come in with the cruise. Okay. Wow. That was. Thank you. Personally, that was amazing. He's pretty good. <laughs> he has to say that. I pay him. We have what I can say to him. Gosh. Um, so how much time have we got? Oh, it's a short one. All right. Um, I'll jump straight in with the book. Okay. No, I'll have enough time. I'm going to ask you a little bit about Texas, life in Texas, okay. and we'll All talk right. about the book. Um, what shall we call it? Oh, hang on. Have we have we got a thingy for this week? Have we got a um, cabinet. cabinet? Who? Nicole Sapphire. Oh, fabulous! We want to have Horace on for a cabinet. Have we done him on a cabinet? We, when you're next back, I'd like an hour, no commercials, just sit down, you and me. Okay. So just tell us. All right. Okay, be fabulous. Um, so for. Oh my gosh. Um, what should we call it? Um, Biden has always been a racist. Okay? Got it. Okay. The sun comes out in the morning, the moon <laughs> at night. Biden has always been a racist. <laughs> I, I find it stunning how people forget Clarence Thomas. I mean, seriously? He was the chairman of the committee. Yes, yes. And we just, because that was 29 years ago, we just forget it? You know, that's the beauty of being a good progressive. Every day is brand new, oh. and yesterday doesn't matter. And the memory hole. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's really nice, actually. Like, you could be a serial adulterer if you, were, if you were progressive. Well, no, you could be a serial adulterer and be the lion of the Senate. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know Sebastian well. Listen to him. He's with us. I don't know about you guys, but radio is best for me when I feel like I'm back in grad school. In the last segment, my, oh my, Professor Cooper was in effect. Um, I, I don't know how much time we're going to have to talk to him, so I'm going to get it out of the way. He's the chairman of Project 21, senior fellow at the National Center for Public Policy, author of the book that's coming out in 30 days' time, How Trump is Making Black America Great Again. We're going to discuss the book. We have a caller who wants to argue with you. But first things first, where have you been for most of the last two months? In a blissful place. It's called Texas, and the Lone Star State. And tell us what it's like. The, you know, love in an age of corona. How, how is it in Texas? So we are expected to be responsible for ourselves. And we what? Are, yes. We, That's we outrageous. Our, our constitutional rights and liberties protected. And therefore, we can go to the mall. We you can go said to you movies. can go to movies. Yes. I'm so jealous. Yeah, it's amazing. Texas. It, it is an amazing place. It's not just a place where we've got the highest speed limit in the country, which is 85 <laughs> miles an hour. Sweet. But... Everything you think of when you're thinking about having the freedom to come and go and do what you will, it's actually really hard unless I turn on the news to remember we're in the pandemic. Horace, it sounds to me like America. Oh, absolutely. Or America it's, should be. And it's one of the places, it's one of the places that's leading by example. A lot of other Greg places Abbott. in the country ought to be looking at what Greg Abbott is doing. Yeah, Florida, Texas leading the way. We're going to talk about your book in a second, but Kevin in Louisville. Has a question, I'm going to squeeze it in. Kevin, ask your question succinctly. Hey, thank you, Mr. Gorka. Uh, just a little background. Uh, I am a conservative. I'm also a German immigrant. Uh, real familiar. You don't sound like no Saudi German immigrant to and, uh, me. Yeah. Nicely done. Yeah, Quick question. Oh, but, uh, yes, good. Anyways, uh, 
Yeah, I'm real familiar with you know East German Stasi and uh, you know places that don't have do. Okay, boxes. question, uh, question, totally question. Your, uh, deal, but the uh, what I what I want to get is uh, you know where was George's uh, due process? Okay, good. Know? Thank you, Kevin. Understand where was George? Thank course, you. Where was George Floyd's due process? So, a couple things. One is we know that a crime has been committed, and yes. we know that it's being investigated. And a man's been charged. And a man has ultimately been charged. Many Americans don't realize that police officers are presumptively allowed to use deadly force. If I use deadly force and a police officer comes on the scene, they're very likely to, to arrest me on the spot. But because officers are presumptively allowed to use deadly force, you wouldn't arrest that individual immediately. And so that normal, natural process should occur. Now, I understand that the caller might not be aware of that, but Benjamin Crump, the family lawyer, he knows this, mm -hmm. and a lot of the media legal commentators know this. When they pretend that actually Minneapolis, one of the bluest yes. places in America, hasn't rapidly reached out to indict uh, the officer or the other officers, they're doing us a disjustice, uh, an injustice. Well, look, the, uh, agenda, agenda, agenda. He's Horace Cooper. Follow his organization, Project 21 News, on Twitter. Um, the, our number is 833-33-GORKA, 833-334-6752. Horace, after that incredible segment, has agreed he's going to come back. We're going to do a whole hour without commercial breaks. We'll post it on YouTube. You guys are blowing up our YouTube channel. In the last two minutes we have with you, how Trump is making black America great again is out in 30 days. You can pre-order it now. Horace Cooper, why did you write this book? I wanted people to understand that what has been happening with black America as well as the country has been nothing short of phenomenal and incredible. You have in to the go last back, three and a half years. In the last three and a half years, you have to go back a hundred years to the roaring twenties to see a period when black prosperity was as great and accomplished as we are seeing now. More black entrepreneurs created six separate record low unemployment for yes. black Americans. And you have to go back to the 1920s when similar low government, growth of the importance of faith in our society, these kinds of success traits worked in the 1920s, they worked again in the 1950s, they worked in the 1980s, and they're being unleashed now and in, in the last three and a half years, in it's the been last, amazing. In the last 30 seconds, Horace, does this make a difference in 152 days? Because I, I, you know, people tell me the president can be popular with black America, allegedly three times more popularity than he had three and a half years ago, but that never translates directly to voting for a candidate. Will it make a difference this time? It worked in 2018 in Georgia and Florida and also in Texas. Black American voters were the difference between retaining governorships by Republicans and also retaining control of the Senate. And do the events of the last nine days accelerate that? We have a V-shaped economy that's about to take off. We're about to see a rocket ship, and I'm hoping that black Americans are patient enough. It's not going to even take 90 days to see that they'll be on that liftoff and get back to where we once were. It's not just Elon Musk's rocket ship. It's America. I am ordering my copy of how Trump is making black America great again right now. So should you follow this man, his organization on Twitter at Project 21 News. I'm jealous because he gets to go to Texas now. I'm Sebastian Gorka. This is America First.